Good morning, everybody. It's the day after retreat. <laughs> My voice is a little bit husky uh, because of all the singing and the dancing that we did um, over retreat, but I am back into it. Had my personal training session this morning. I um, uh, did my hair, everything. I'm all ready to go because I have a super, super, super busy day today uh, getting ready for my very first online workshop um, uh, that is running tomorrow. So I'll be pretty much in my home and running and executing an event that many of you who follow me have perhaps attended in the past. Good morning, Melissa. Nice to see you. Um, so we're going to hit it off in about a minute. As soon as I have a moment to uh, share this across a couple of groups, um, and then we'll get stuck into the content. Uh, the content came about um, uh, as a result of a few questions that were being posed during retreat. Um, and I thought, why not dissect this um, a little bit better? So let's keep our fingers crossed that internet plays along with us this morning, unlike last week, which um, uh, which can be so annoying, but I'm just trying to um, get this across to the group. Come on. All right, I'm just gonna share it. Pretty much people can, um, um, can watch it in there. All right, sharing one more group and then we'll get stuck into it. Hope you guys have had a nice weekend. We had such a beautiful um, venue. This is the first time we went to the, this particular retreat venue uh, in the Dandenongs. It was like we were stuck in the middle of the mountain, uh, in the middle of nowhere, uh, which is really, really exciting. So um, yeah, I the, we're gonna try to use it again for the February retreat. So I'm just going to, I'm just getting all of these things sorted out and then we can get going on mentoring and how to choose mentors and all that kind of stuff and all the mistakes people make um, when hiring a mentor. All right, let me just edit this. Da -da -da -da. I just want to put a post. My computer's been doing all these new updates and um, bits and pieces and yeah, okay, that's all done now. I'm all yours. All right, you guys, so... Um, often people ask me and they hear um, that I always talk about the fact that I do hire mentors. I've hired them from, since that day one and I still continue to invest in different courses, um, experts and all that sort of stuff. But people often don't know, like, you know, or they're not sure themselves, like, how did you find them? And um, how do you know who's the right person for you? And now, first of all, I'm going to share my story in terms of how I have found and hire my people and mentors, and then I'm going to share what other people have an option to do. So, excuse my husky voice. <laughs> mm. So, um, initially, when I started out seven and a half years ago, I um, hired uh, my first mentor about three months after completing the um, 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 the uh, weekend training that I had at the coaching school. And as we were going through, um, you know, I realized, you know, people say coaching gets you from A to B the fastest way possible. And I go, well, I need, if I'm going to preach that to others, which means I'm going to coach them, I have to have a coach myself as well. And I think that's the number one thing that I think it's so important to fellow coaches as well is that um, if you expect for other people to pay you to get coached, certainly you should um, have done the work yourself or have someone along you, alongside you who is ahead in the game of coaching and all that sort of stuff, mentoring you. So there's, there's three different ways people um, classify mentoring. So there's a mentor. They're, welcome to everybody. Sorry, guys, I, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on the content. Otherwise, I would say hello to all of these lovely names here. So you could hire a mentor, you could hire a coach, or you could hire a consultant. So there's three different um, uh, things people call themselves. And in some way, you could end up being a blend of all three or the person you uh, hire, good morning, Megan, um, it can be a blend of all three things. So um, if I had to define them myself, this is how I see them. Well, a mentor is someone who has achieved the results you're looking to achieve, and they can show you the steps or reverse engineer the steps for you to get to where you're going. So they have got the results. 
A coach doesn't necessarily have to have achieved the results you're looking for. A coach can um, ask really cool questions um, and extract or help you arrive at the answers yourself rather than sort of giving you the steps and telling you, you should do this next or this is better and da da da. And then a consultant is a person who um, pretty much tells you, do this, do that, <laughs> you know, and they're kind of like just um, do, uh, telling you or sometimes even doing it for you. So it can be, uh, you can end up being a blend of those things. I find found at the very, very beginning of starting out, I was more in a coaching space, like I was a coach for weight loss. Um, and I hired a mentor. So I hired a mentor who had grown a, a grown a coaching practice successfully. And then I, um, uh, obviously, as I, I grew my business to a point where it was six figures plus, then I started calling myself more of a mentor. And at the moment, I think my business is a, a blend of mentoring, consulting, and then uh, a touch of coaching here and there as I see people get stuck and move through. So I trust that has sort of cleared up the difference bef between what a coach, a mentor, and consultant is and, um, and how I see it. And other people may see it differently, right? So the way I hired my first mentor was, of course, I saw that he was doing the things I wanted to be doing and having uh, um, those results I wanted to get. And we happened to be in a... Um, in a situation where he was a different type of mentor, not a one-on-one -on -one mentor to me. And I sort of thought, you know what, he's got what I want. Um, you know, and I approached him and said, you know, how can we work together? You know, what would that relationship look like? And I actually worked with this person for two and a half years, the first person. And then um, I felt after two and a half years, it, this all happened very, so for my life, uh, and my experience over the last seven and a half years since I started, this has been very organic. It hasn't been, I need a mentor right now and I'm looking for a mentor, <laughs> right? It just kind of, the person showed up. So the, the old saying, when the student is ready, the teacher turns up, right? And in this case was the mentor turns up. So the transition from my first mentor to my second mentor also happened very organically. I happened to go out on to a coffee chat with someone and she was telling me about all these new things that I should be doing. Well, am I doing them in my business? What's this like? And I didn't know what she was talking about. And I'm like, I don't know any of this stuff. And it sounds very important. Um, and you seem to know, like you, uh, like you know what you're talking about, right? And she said, um, and um, uh, and uh, she she goes, yeah, yeah, all this stuff is really important. Morning, Amy. And so. Um, I, um, I said to her after a two hour coffee chat conversation, I said, well, do you mentor people on this stuff? Like we kind of met up to get to know each other. And now all of a sudden it seems like it's not the na next natural logical person to work with. And actually this person I worked with for six months, this was my second one who I mentor. And she, um, uh, was the one that actually initiated or um, uh, suggested that I start the ultimate business support group because the whole thing, so I felt like I got to a certain point with my first mentor for two and a half years and then I, um, you know, wanted to learn something new which I didn't think um, he knew or could offer me, so therefore I, I transitioned to the next mentor which um, was all about building the community and building the following, right? And that's how Ultimate Business Support started, which is this particular call, UBS Live, is connected to the Ultimate Business Support Group, which started now over four years ago. Um, and you guys know that it's been very, very active for uh, over that period of time. And so with that particular mentor, I learned all about pre-launches and launches and um, starting a community and you know gaining that following and all that sort of stuff. Um, then I had a bit of a break, um, so I'm just sharing my story first as to how I found them and how it all came about and what's happening now, and then I'm going to share some ideas for you guys how to choose and what mistakes to avoid. So um, uh, I had a, a six-month break, and really in that six-month break after working with my second mentor, like I didn't have a mentor on board, I felt like I was okay and I was going along fine. Um, but I, uh, I can tell the difference between when I am working with someone than when I'm not, because I get so much more done. Uh, it's that whole accountability aspect of it, you know, and I just love it. You know, my PT was here at 7am 
if I didn't have a session with her, do you reckon I would have got up after such an intense retreat to do my training? But now I feel amazing, good, on, on the ball, and I don't actually feel a hangover after the retreat. <laughs> I usually would for like three or four days when I didn't used to do regular exercise, but now I'm like, it's just a normal Monday, back, back to it, even though I haven't stopped, um, you know, since all, all of last week. And so when I felt like I had a bit of a downward slope, and usually we'd seek out a mentor when um, we're in pain, when, um, when things are not going as, um, as well as we would like to, we feel like we're stagnating or feeling stuck and don't know what are the next steps to go, do. And I ran into someone in Perth that um, was, and I, this was the point where I wanted to take my business to seven figures. And I ran into someone in Perth at one of my speaking gigs and said, look, I'm working with someone, you know, would you like me to kind of connect you? Because I was looking for someone who can take me to seven figures because um, that was the next step. And I didn't feel there was enough people working one-on-one -on -one with others at this level who also had the results. So then I got introduced to my third mentor. And again, a conversation later, a big leap of faith. That one was a huge leap of faith. I felt sick to my stomach to go and work with him because I was also... Um, five months pregnant uh, or four or five months pregnant with my third baby. So I was about to embark on uh, a lot of accountability, a lot of tasks, a lot of extra things over and above what I'm doing and being super pregnant. So then I hired him and we worked with him for three months uh, because then I had to have the baby. And then after that, I had the baby and, um, and had a break for, uh, for about five or six months and went back and completed the last three months of that engagement. Nowadays, I don't look anymore for people to help me with like mental funk kind of stuff. I look for niched mentors. So my latest mentor was this year and it wasn't like a one-on-one -on -one mentor. I uh, did a program uh, with this person from America and pretty much I interviewed him on this exact call on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. Uh, and he spoke about his stuff and um, I was very curious because it was just like the next thing that would help me solve problems within, uh, not problems, but take my business to the next level again. And so after I talked to him and I got to know him and interviewed him, I go, you know what? I think I really need to do your program. So again, when the student is ready, the teacher turns up. So as you have seen, that's one strategy of um, hiring people who are going to help you. Um, ensure that obviously do your due diligence that they have got the results that you're looking to achieve yourself. Um, yes, there is a ton of advertising, sexy advertising out there um, that says, oh, we're going to help you make a six-figure business, seven-figure business, all of that sort of stuff. Make more money, you know, take your business to the next level that is being promoted um, with uh, without any integrity. And so please, 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 um, you know, you can tell if someone is doing well. You can tell if they um, are, you know, successful, you know, watch their following, watch um, the kind of posts that, uh, posts that they put up. Are they being consistent in terms of keeping in touch with people? How are they with their follow-up? Like, you know, look for testimonials, look for social proof. And more importantly, like, you know, ask other successful people to refer you to a mentor that they would recommend. So when people ask me, some of my clients go, well, Nat, what if I work, when I work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, who would you recommend and all that sort of stuff? If I don't know of anyone and I haven't um, done like background checks or don't know them really, really well, I wouldn't recommend um, people, you know, go to um, uh, any particular person unless I really have a relationship with them. Uh, great advice. I feel nervous when I see people flaunting their success rather than you can actually see their success. Yeah. And, and it, that's going to happen. I think like there is, um, truth and, um, non-truth, uh, all over the place in every single niche, not just coaching and mentorships and all that sort of stuff. But you can uh, listen to your gut is very important thing is listen to your gut. And then even if you not, don't make the right choice or, um, you know, create, make the right decision, then, um, you know, uh, pull back and, you know, tell the truth and all that sort of stuff. So uh, the second way, for those of you that are very detailed people on the call here today, um, is to actually obviously uh, ask for recommendations for mentors and go about, you know, narrow down to five that you'd like to speak to and then have that conversation with them and see who you gel with. 
uh, you know, do your research if you like. Um, you know, uh, I couldn't think of anything more boring, got to tell you the truth, doing all this research and this, uh, talking to so many people. Uh, but there are very detailed people out there that will talk to five different providers and work out what are their pros and cons and do they gel with them and what kind of program do they offer and all that sort of stuff. So you can absolutely do that. And if that makes you feel better about making an informed choice, then do it. But I have found that listening to my gut and going with people who've just kind of come into my life that for some reason, and I don't know why, and then they've got a result that I want to achieve, then, um, you know, by all means, go for it. So at any one stage of this game of building a business, everyone should be having a mentor and be working with someone who's teaching them a new skill and taking them to the next level. I feel at the moment, like aside from doing that program earlier this year with um, the uh, person in America, like I feel like my Facebook guy is my mentor because we pay him a monthly retainer. We work with him pretty much daily. <laughs> well, the, it is kind of daily, but you know, we have a lot of um, interaction with him. So we're kind of learning this a world of the online digital marketing and what, what are things and strategies and tactics that work back better because we're really good already at our, um, you know, once people get into our funnel, you know, we're really good at taking them through the whole uh, process and you're not going to take everyone through the whole process. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a numbers game, right? Morning, Helen. Um, Helen's my gorgeous crew person from Retreat who made me so, uh, she went, well, I won the gold medal at Retreat, best crew ever. Um, Anyway, so um, now I want to talk about the mistakes people make uh, when hiring a mentor. And if you guys have any questions, by the way, or comments on this topic, just post them below. Obviously, they're coming up and the internet's working, so I'm super excited. The internet today is playing along. So mistakes people make uh, when hiring a mentor. Well, the one, number one, biggest, 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 biggest mistake I see people make when they hire a mentor is that then they hire a second mentor and a third mentor and a fourth mentor because the shiny object syndrome is something that they cannot resist, right? And um, and I, I have that personality type that can get attracted to the shiny object, but it, I don't know what it is in my life that I didn't overcommit um, along this journey. I don't know if I could give you an answer. I don't know what, uh, what it would be, but I'm definitely a shiny object syndrome personality, right? Uh, for those of you who know, know DISC, I'm an ID. So you, you'd know that that's like fast decisions and shiny object. And so um, uh, the biggest mistake is hiring, let's say even if you hire two, uh, two is not as bad if they're in different niches and they're showing you a different solution, like in terms of, you know, say I'm helping people write a book and someone else is teaching them how to do one other different thing. They're not, it's not like sort of a generic kind of, uh, a GP kind of mentor, right? And so, but when people, and actually even before they get a mentor, sometimes I see a lot of um, posts on social media asking for advice from other people. And it, that's even worse. Like even before you've hired a mentor or even have anyone to ask the question of what you should do next, posting up a comment on social media about what people think is going to give you so many perspectives and angles of where people see the thing you're asking a question about it as to what you should do next, that it's actually only going to get you confused. There's a famous saying that I've been sharing for a long time now is that a confused mind will always say no, right? And that's what happens even when you're paying the big bucks to uh, mentors that you've actually hired to get the advice from. So if people are hiring three or four different uh, people along their journey, you know, those three or four different mentors have obviously achieved their success in probably three or four different ways. You know, you know what they say, uh, it's, um, <laughs> um, hey Muriel, it, it, there's many different ways to skin a cat, right? The way I have achieved success in my life is different to the way someone else has achieved success in, in their life. It's different to the way, the way someone else has. You know, every single person has had a slightly different way or a strategy. Yes, there is commonalities and common sense when it comes to growing a business. However, 
um, you know, there's still different routes. You know, my route of how I help people is to become an author and then these are the other things you do beyond that. Some other person might teach them, hey, get into the media and then these are the next steps you do to get there. Other people teach you to become a public speaker and then get to your next steps. But if you are hiring four or five different people and they're all saying, do, 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 you know, who are you going to listen to? Because really the key to hiring a mentor is actually do the stuff they tell you to do so you can get the result because at the end of the day, you're modeling excellence to get to the results they've got, right? So that's the conflict that I can see in people have, that have multiple mentors. The conflict of, you know, I don't know who to listen to. I don't feel good about this, but I feel good about that. Good morning, Joy. Um, so... It's really important to just stick with one, finish their program, do all the work you can. By the way, it's too overwhelming to have five people telling you what to do. You know, it's it's even going to be like make you feel like, I don't know, which one, where am I? What am I going to do now? <laughs> you know, and so it can keep you really focused. So recently I downloaded this book, um, which which I've been told about many, many years that I and I just haven't read in, read it in its entirety, but um, I'm reading it now, right now, because I want to have the full story. I knew the summary of it. It makes so much sense, but now I'm reading the whole story. So read the book, The One Thing, uh, The One Thing, uh, and um, it's really about staying focused. And when it comes to mentorship, that's exactly that what I'm talking about here is, um, you know, pick one, stick with it, complete their program, get your ROI. You know, the one thing I always have said, and I say it through all my seminars and my half-day workshops and all that, I hate people flushing down their money down the toilet and just moving from one program to the next and not getting their return on investment. And when I invented Ultimate 48 Hour Author, it was the thing that I wanted to solve and, and uh, nip at the bud because the reality is only 3% of people ever follow through when they work with a mentor, do a seminar, a program, or a high-end education, right? Only 3%, right? And they're the 3% that are obviously making the millions and bazillions, <laughs> gazillions in this world, right? So... So what I always say to people, if you're going to go into a program, if they say this is what you will, you have, a, um, you know, this is what's available to you in terms of achieving results, do what they say. So the mindset, so the second mistake I make, uh, people make, so the first mistake is having too many mentors on board um, and not knowing, get, just getting confused and overwhelmed. The second mistake is not following what your mentor says. So your mentor says, do this, 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 and this right, this week or this uh, fortnight, right? And what do people do? Oh, they'll go do their own ideas. They're going to go do their own, um, uh, you know, side projects and get distracted along the other, you know, things that they should be doing and all that sort of stuff. Sometimes I even see it in uh, some of my authors when uh, they re retreat, they're focusing on something that's so relevant. I say, get your freaking content done, Go in your room, record your content, just get all your, that's the bulk of the stuff. Don't worry about finalizing book titles, taglines, things like that. Get your content done. I'm telling you, I'm your mentor. I know that this is, this is where you're going to get stuck. It's not the title or the tagline or the final sexy names. You know, you, you're here to get focused, to get productive and to get the content done. And so what I see is someone here will hear something from a mentor and, and then they'll still do their own thing. Okay, they'll still go and off, uh, do their own thing and um, and then come back next to it going, I, I didn't do, well, I didn't get the chance to do that and all that. There's a famous saying, if you, if your mentor told you something and then you went off and didn't get a result, but you did, go back and do what your mentor said in the first place. I don't know, the quote's a lot tighter than that, but that's the gist of its saying. Um, let me just read Amy's comment. I can attest the power of following exactly what your mentor says. I found so much power in me following your footy. Amy, you are the um, perfect, a prime example of following a system like as it's set out. You're a prime example. So, so um, you also didn't come to a physical retreat, which was even harder for you. You, you actually did it from home and, and, you know, still followed all the steps as they were written and as they were mentored to you. Um, but so many people are like, oh, uh, thanks, Jody. I was getting a bit emotional here, right? <laughs> because I just see it all the time. And I, I think there's so much potential 
of people just getting the results so much faster and easier. So read that book, The One Thing, and keep um, uh, eliminating things along the way as you keep uh, getting stronger and more confident in your one thing that's your signature thing. I've eliminated one big thing next year. I'm not going to say um, say it on live right now because I don't. I will need to talk to one person about it. I don't want, don't want them to watch it from live. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm like right down just doing uh, you know three steps in the whole process of what the business is and just repeating those three steps over, over and over and again. Other mistakes that people. What do you think other mistakes are? Look, come on, you guys. There's like 15, 20 of you. You've been watching this with uh, and listening to me here. What do you think other th mistakes are that people make when it comes to mentors? Like you type up some comments, yeah? All right, so um, uh, financially, okay, let's talk about the third mistake. So committing to a mentor that you cannot afford to work with um, or it perhaps it's not the right time. So sometimes um, we need to go through a range of mentors or depending on where we are at the, uh, in the journey. So my first mentor, when I was working uh, with him, uh, it was only about six fifty a month, and that was actually probably well calibrated to where my journey was. My second mentor was a thousand dollars a month. My third mentor was five and a half thousand dollars a month. So I grew through that uh, whole process, but I also because of doing the work, I was able to um, uh, with them. Uh, so I always had one, always invested, even if I didn't have the money, I, I, I would find it, but I would do it as a calculated risk, as a calculated um, decision. And a commitment that I would do the work. Um, Amy says, think they don't, uh, they know better, so try to improve the system as they go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know better than you. <laughs> uh, thinking it won't work before even trying that. Okay, good one, Joy. Actually, I'm going to expand on that one, Joy. Um, we might stay here, guys, for an extra, I know it's only five minutes to go, but I think there's a lot more to stay, uh, stay here. Okay, so um, the question often people doubt themselves before they take a leap in, in an investment and a financial investment, which sometimes is large, um, can be uh, often people say, will say no or pull the pin because of the doubt, will this work for me? Okay, have you ever asked yourselves that? Will this work for me? Right, it's the complete wrong question to be asking right here. Right? Will this work for me? Well, if this person standing in front of you has shown you all these other people that have helped, uh, they've helped before, is saying, yes, you qualify for my process as long as it's a good fit, it's the wrong question to ask. All right? And that's where this is how I made the leap of faith with my third mentor is not asking the question, will this work for me? Which is what I was asking when I was like in indecision. Hey, Brendan. <laughs> In my indecision, I was asking the wrong question. And then when I re relaxed and fell asleep at night, I was like, hmm, let's think back. Now, when I did the $15,000 coaching program, did I get return on investment? Yes. How did I do that? Well, I did the work. I followed the advice. I did the work. Okay. When I worked with mentor number one, did I get a return on investment? Yes. Why? How did I do that? I did the work. I did what I said. So when I went and looked at the references for how I behaved with previous programs and mentors, my result, uh, my answer to myself was, I did the work, I listened to them, I got the result. So what's the issue in me committing to this mentor who's, um, I need to pay five and a half thousand dollars a month because I'm sick to my stomach to say, yes, I'm in, right? So the question to ask is not, will it work for me? The question to ask, and this is the question that came in my head, because my subconscious mind said to me immediately, can't afford this, you're pregnant, you're four months pregnant, you're going to have a baby in like, like five months' time, you're committing to a six-month process, which is five and a half thousand dollars a month. It's, um, you know, it's crazy, right? You can't afford it, it's not the right time. Like the brain will always say, you know, the easiest two excuses are time and money. And I said, Natasha, you're a coach. You're a coach, I said to myself. I said, you know that time and money are just an excuse. So what's really underneath all of this that you're, you're you know, what's the real truth, you know? And my little voice, whichever, wherever it came from, said, you know, are you willing to do the work? Okay? Are you willing to do the work? That's the correct question. Not, is this going to work for me? Am I willing to do the work? And I go, okay, well, 
right, I have to, kind of have to because this baby's coming, right? This baby's going to pop out and I have to get the business to a point where it, I have a buffer if sales drop and all that kind of stuff. And so asking the correct question, am I willing to do the work? And then looking at my references for historical behavior in mentors programs, all that, I did the work. I said, when there's skin in the game, my back's about uh, up against the wall. I am freaking out that I'm going to lose everything. I'm going to go out there and hustle as hard as I can to get uh, do the work. And so the outcome of that mentoring relationship in eight days of starting to work with this mentor, we generated $80,000 in sales. So this is me committing to the first month. And in eight weeks, we did um, $250,000 in sales. And that was our first year in the seven-figure um, realm. And moral of the story is you have to take the leap of faith. You don't have the luxury of hindsight, but the only thing that you have is you believing that you're going to do the work and you're going to listen to this person. You're going to get out there. Now, the very last thing I want to cover, and we are going to go over at 9.30 a little bit, but I think it's just going to wrap up the whole whole thing. So, and I just lost it. <laughs> I just lost it. What was it? Um, so, um, are you willing to do the work? I, I lost my last point. Ah, oh, all right. Well, I'm, I, it might might come back. Um, so, let's summarize. Right. So, mentorships. Are you the, when teacher when the student is ready, the teacher turns up. Look for people who've got the results. Um, research. Ask for recommendations. Do your due diligence. All of that sort of stuff. Then. If you want to uh, hire the via doing very detailed, you know, interviews, da, 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 do it, do it, but make an informed decision that you're working with the right person. Then listen to what your mentor says. Listen to them. Um, you know, uh, follow everything they've said. Then do your extracurricular activities, right? Um, you know, make sure you don't have too many mentors on hand, right? You, that you're not working five different people telling you five different ways to skin a cat and you, um, uh, you know, and then you're confused and a confused mind always says no, right? And financially, make sure you're well calibrated with the person you're working with so that you're not putting your life in danger and your, your kids are, are not, um, you know, going to go without food on the table and roof over their heads and all that. It's freaking scary. Every day, I feel like I get up and I go, oh my God, I'm going to lose everything. I better go take action, right? I've got five people to look after, you know, my kids, my husband, mom, um, you know, my people who are, I'm paying, you know, my virtual assistant, like this is a full-time job. Like if I don't do well, these people don't have a roof over their head. So I kind of like leverage the pain for myself and I go, and even though like it's, an, and I, I love the, the challenge of everything what it is, but I also put leverage of pain because a lot of the time, if there's not enough pain, behind you creating a success in your life, you know, your back's up against the wall. Uh, sorry, you, you don't have enough, um, uh, like, leverage. And it's like, oh, it's cushy. I've still got some savings. I've still, oh, I've still got six more months of savings. And then you, the savings wind down and all that sort of stuff. You dry up all your funds. So I'm so grateful that I grew up with, uh, my auntie was a banker. And uh, my, my, the mindset in my family, even though the mindset, a limiting belief was you have to make uh, work very hard to make lots of money. And a lot of my family uh, has worked very hard over the businesses, all of that sort of stuff. And, but very hard working, not smart, very hard to make lots of money. So that belief, you've got to work hard. My mom worked three jobs, um, you know, when she was raising me as a single mom. So watching that was like, oh, you've got to work hard to make lots of money. But the one belief that I believe has helped me a lot and that was a positive and a resourceful one from my upbringing is that you always have to have, they called it a black fond. <laughs> I don't know, it's literally translated from Macedonian, but it's like, you know, a money that you put aside. It's like you never touch. You you just have it there for the ultimate emergency, um, you know, and, um, and you just, you know, always, always have it. And this is what I've built up in my business. I've built up. So if today everything stops, you know, and there's no more another cent coming through that I'm going to be okay for the next two years. Okay. And I keep building the buffer. Like it started off with a um, few months, few, um, you know, uh, half a year, a year. So I keep now expanding the buffer. And one day that buffer is going to become, I'm okay for life, right? 
because um, now we've invested into our fourth, um, fourth property. We've hired up a, a property uh, expert, again, mentor, right? I've hired a property mentor who did my whole 15 year and explain uh, of what we're gonna do, how we're gonna buy five properties over the next five years, and did all of that kind of stuff, paid awesome money for it, um, and uh, did the work because I, I realized how is I going to buy a house from August to November when I'm doing international, national tours and I've got no time on the weekends and I don't want to go looking at houses? So then not only has he done our plan, but he's given us the, um, uh, we're hiring for the extra services of being, if you like, a buyer's agent, advocate, whatever, whatever those are called, right? I don't even know what they're called. Just I need one of those. I need one of those so, you know, I can, I can do what I'm good at and they can do what they're good at. So... How do you build those things in your life? And along the way, you need these people who are going to support you on that journey. Like last year, investing in Amy, who was on this call before. I don't know if she's still there. But investing in Amy to help me set up, like, you know, resystemize my office, resystemize my garage, you know, and just to make my life flow faster, easier, you know. It was great. I'm already an organized person, but I don't know. Amy does this every single day. So she had three or four golden tips that helped me now even be better in, and save even more time. So still there, there you go, I've given you a testimonial. <laughs> uh, you can extract this one from the video and put it up um, somewhere if you like. So um, so yeah, you guys, I, um, I'm i strong believer we need yeah, other experts, but be very mindful of how you're controlling your financial situation. Uh, cash flow is king at the end of the day. Um, always, always, always a build up and continue to build up your buffers in terms of where you are. And I really trust that this was valuable uh, for a lot of you. And uh, I think there was a lot of insights. I can't remember the last thing I was going to say when I was going to say it back then. If I do remember, I'll come back um, on live and I'll just um, do the, the final bit. Um, but I'm about to have a super busy day doing uh, all the wrap up from retreat um, yesterday, uh, the post retreat follow ups uh, and bits and pieces that go out. Um, then I'm getting ready for my first half day workshop uh, tomorrow. I'm literally going to be in my house delivering a half day workshop online. So I'm really, really excited about that. And um, uh, if any of my authors want to jump on that, let me know. I can give you a link. Uh, you guys can come for free because you're obviously my, my uh, raving fans. Um, but yeah, I will uh, have about over 20 people on that who've paid to be there. So this is the first time an online paid event is being run. So, and anyone who's watching this that might not be a client of mine or is curious about the Ultimate 48 Hour Author Blueprint for Business Success, uh, tomorrow, 10 o'clock Melbourne time through to about 1.30, about three and a half hours we're going to do. Um, we're going to be delivering that for the first time from the comfort of my own home. Um, otherwise, have an amazing week. Go and smash it out. Um, I'll come on live again next Monday. Now I'm in, literally my year's finished, you guys. I'm three for two months. But I'll be living and doing things like this more. You'll see me more like active on social media. So, And I can't wait for Joy's retreat. I'm doing her retreat. There you go, another mentor who's going to help me find my zen, right? Uh, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Megan, Joy. Um, I love that, guys. Um, I think this has been a good uh, good live and a good things to just remind ourselves of. Um, and um, have a great week, and I'll connect with you guys very soon. Bye.